My name is Diana Migliaretti, and I will be speaking about pediatric CT imaging and associated radiation exposure and estimated cancer risk in the United States. This study will be appearing in JAMA Pediatrics next month. Next slide. The study was led by me and Dr. Rebecca Smith Byman from UCSF. We collaborated with investigators from several institutions that participate in the HMO Research Network, which is an organization of HMO related research centers. All participating data sites store medical data in a standardized format for efficient collaborative research. Next slide. The objectives of my talk are to demonstrate that the use of pediatric CT imaging has increased over time, especially use of relatively high dose studies, that patient radiation doses from pediatric CTs are quite variable, even for exams of the same anatomic region that cancer risk from pediatric CT is a concern, and that the number of radiation-induced cancers from CT imaging can be drastically reduced by eliminating unnecessary CT imaging and by reducing doses for the highest dose exams, for example, the top 25% of exams with the highest doses. Next slide. As background, the increased use of pediatric CT raises concerns about cancer risk from ionizing radiation. Radiation doses delivered by CT are 100 to 500 times higher than those delivered by conventional radiography. These doses are in ranges that have been linked to increased cancer risk. This is especially concerning for children because children are more sensitive to radiation-induced cancer and children have many remaining years left of life for cancer to develop. Next slide. The objectives of our study were to explore trends in pediatric CT use over time to measure radiation exposure from common pediatric CT exams, to quantify the cancer risk from this radiation exposure, and to project the number of radiation-induced cancers from one-year pediatric CT imaging in the United States and estimate the number of those future cancers that we could potentially prevent by dose reduction strategies. Next slide. This map shows the sites contributing data to the two parts of our study. Group Health Cooperative in Western Washington, Kaiser Permanente Northwest in Hawaii, and Marshfield Clinic contributed data to both the CT utilization study and the radiation dose study. Kaiser Permanente Colorado and Georgia participated in the CT utilization study only, and Henry Ford participated in the radiation dose study only. Next slide. For the CT utilization study, we included data from six integrated healthcare systems around the United States from 1996 to 2010. We included all enrolled children under the age of 15 years. This included 152,000 to 371,000 children each year for a total of 4.8 million person years. From these data, we calculated rates of CT imaging use overall and by anatomic region. Next slide. This figure shows trends in CT use over time by age group and healthcare system. The brown dashed lines show rates for children under 5 years. The blue lines show rates for children aged 5 to 14 years. The thin dashed lines show rates at each health system, and the thick lines show the average rates across health systems. You can see there is some variability in the rates across the health systems, but the patterns are similar. In children under 5 years of age, the rates doubled from 11 per thousand in 1996 to 20 CTs per thousand in 2005 to 2007, then decreased a bit to 16 per thousand in 2010. In children 5 to 14 years of age, the rates almost tripled from 10 CTs per thousand children in 1996 to 27 per thousand in 2005 to 2007. Then they decreased slightly to 24 CTs per children in 2010. Next slide. This slide shows the trends in CT use over time by anatomic region imaged for children under 5. Imaging increased for all exam types studied. Head CT is the most commonly used exam, and in these youngest children, it had the largest absolute increase in use from about 8 CTs per thousand children in 1996 to 14 per thousand in 2004, dropping to 11 per thousand in 2010. Use of abdomen imaging doubled from 2 per thousand in 1996 to 4 per thousand in 2007, then, decre then decreased to 3 exams per thousand in 2010. Use of chest CT increased about 50 percent 
and use of spine CT increased fivefold. Next slide. In children 5 to 14, the most dramatic increase was for abdomen CTs, which is a relatively high dose exam. Use of abdomen and or pelvis CT increased from 2 per thousand in 1996 to a peak of 11 per thousand in 2007, then decreased a bit to 9 per thousand in 2010. Head CT is still the most common CT exam type, increasing about 50%. The use of chest CT increased threefold and spine CT increased ninefold during the study period. Next slide. This slide shows the information in a different way. It shows the distribution of exam type by year and age group. You can see that at the start of the study, in 1996 to 1998, the distribution of exam types was similar for children 1 to 4 and 5 to 14. In 2008-2010, abdomen CTs make up a much larger proportion of the CTs used in children 5 to 14. For the second part of the study, we calculated radiation doses for the most common CT types. We included CTs performed at five integrated healthcare systems from 2001 to 2010 on children under 15 years of age. We randomly selected 744 CTs of the head, chest, abdomen, and spine which are the most common types of pediatric CT performed. To calculate radiation doses, we abstracted detailed scan parameters from each of the CTs, including parameters such as the scan length, slice thickness, and KVP. We calculated the absorbed organ doses using a new Monte Carlo simulation approach developed by Chunzik Lee at the National Cancer Institute. This approach is based on a skeleton dosimetry method that uses improved gender and age-specific computational anatomy phantoms of newborns and children ages 1, 5, 10, and 15. From these organ doses, we calculated the effective dose by summing the organ doses weighting by the ICRP-103 factors. These box plots show the distributions of effective doses for each of the exam types and age groups. For simplicity, I show the effective doses as a summary measure, as opposed to all the organ doses. The shaded boxes on the box plot show the middle 50% of the data, or the interquartile range. This is the 25th to the 75th percentiles. The lines in the box show the median value, which is the middle value, and the whiskers coming out from the boxes go from the 25th or 75th percentiles to the furthest point that is within 1.5 times the interquartile range. So any stars past the upper whiskers are considered outliers. The first point I hope to demonstrate with this slide is that the doses vary widely, even for the same exam type. This variation isn't accounted for by body size or BMI. The second point is that the relationship between the effective dose and age depends on the exam type. For head CTs, the effective dose decreases with age, whereas for abdomen CTs, the effective dose increases with age. This slide shows the percent of exams with doses greater than 20 millisieverts by exam type and age. We observed no head CTs with doses above 20 millisieverts. Abdomen CTs had the greatest proportion of exams with doses greater than 20 millisieverts, increasing from 14% of exams in children under 5 years of age to 25% of exams among children 10 to 14 years. Between 3 to 8% of chest CTs had high doses, and between 6 and 14% of spine CTs had doses above 20 millisieverts. From these doses, we estimated the cancer risk. Specifically, we estimated the lifetime attributable risks of cancer from the organ doses using two different sets of published models. The first set came from the BEER-7 report, and the second from a publication by Barrington et al. that further modeled cancers not included in the BEER report. This slide shows the estimated lifetime attributable risks of solid cancers per 10,000 CTs based on the organ doses we observed. Risks for girls are in tan and risks for boys in blue. The colors go from darkest to lightest as age increases. Radiation-induced cancer risks are higher in girls than boys. 
Adam and CTs are projected to cause 27 to 34 solid cancers per 10,000 CTs in girls and 13 to 25 cancers per 10,000 CTs in boys. For girls, cancer risks are 21 to 31 per 10,000 chest CTs and 13 to 38 cancers per 10,000 spine CTs. Another way to look at these data are by the number of CTs leading to one cancer. For head CTs, I only show the number for the youngest age group because the other numbers are off the chart. A radiation-induced solid cancer is projected to result from every 300 to 390 abdomen CTs in girls and every 670 to 760 CTs in boys. In girls, one solid cancer is projected to result from every 330 to 480 chest CTs and every 270 to 800 spine CTs. This graph shows the lifetime attributable risks of leukemia per 10,000 CTs. Interestingly, head CT in young children has the highest leukemia risk. This is because young children have more active bone marrow in their skulls. Rates increase with age from 0.5 to 1.9 per 10,000 head CTs and decrease with age from 0.6 to 0.4 chest CTs. The trends for abdomen and spine CTs are non-monotonic with age, ranging from 0.7 to 1.0 per 10,000 abdomen CTs and 0.4 to 0.7 per 10,000 spine CTs. One in every 5,200 head CTs in children under the age of 5 are expected to result in one leukemia case. Based on the imaging patterns and doses we observed, we projected the number of radiation-induced cancers we might expect from one year of pediatric CT imaging in the United States. We assume there are 4.25 million pediatric CTs performed annually in the U.S. We applied the lifetime attributable risks corresponding to the doses we observed and under three dose reduction scenarios. If the CT exams were reduced by one-third, which is the estimated number of unnecessary exams, if doses above the 75th percentile were lowered to the median dose with an age group and anatomic region, and if both of these dose reduction strategies were applied. Assuming there are 4.25 million pediatric CTs performed in the U.S. each year, we would expect 4 million of these CTs to be of the head, abdomen, chest, or spine. This number of CTs is projected to result in 4,500 solid cancers and 340 leukemia cases, giving a total of 4,870 cancer cases from one year of pediatric CT imaging. If we could eliminate unnecessary CT use, which is often quoted to be a third of the CTs in the U.S., we could reduce this number by 33% to 3,250 cases. If instead we focused on reducing the highest 25% of doses to the median dose, we could reduce this number by 43%, a larger number. If we successfully applied both strategies of eliminating unnecessary imaging and reducing the highest 25% of doses to the median dose, we could reduce the projected number of radiation-induced cancers by 62% from 4,800 to 1,800. So to summarize our findings, from 1996 to 2007, we found that CT use doubled in children less than 5 years old and tripled in children 5 to 14. Use increased from 11 to 25 CTs per 1,000 children per year. Interestingly, these rates are lower than rates reported in fee-for-service settings, which are about 27 to 57 per 1,000 CTs, suggesting that national rates are likely higher than we observed. At these integrated healthcare systems, rates have started to decline between 2007 and 2010. We observed the largest increases in CT use for the higher dose exams, such as abdomen and pelvis scans, especially among children 5 to 14 years old. Not surprisingly, head CT is the most common pediatric study. And this is concerning because young children have high active bone marrow doses, which could lead to increased leukemia risk. 
One result I didn't have time to show is that the CTs account for only 3 to 6 percent of imaging exams, but 14 to 50 percent of radiation exposure from pediatric imaging. In terms of radiation exposure, we found that doses are quite variable, even for the same exam type, which results in some children receiving high doses. The cancer risks from these doses are not ignorable. We estimated that one year of pediatric CT imaging in the U.S. could result in 4,800 radiation-induced cancers. We can potentially reduce the number of radiation-induced cancers by lowering doses. The most benefit is obtained by lowering doses for the highest dose exams. We explored the potential effect of lowering the top 25% of doses to the median and found this strategy could pre prevent 43% of radiation-induced cancers. Of course, the number of radiation-induced cancers could also be decreased by reducing unnecessary imaging, which the literature often cites as being one-third of CTs. CTs should only be, be performed when medically necessary, and other imaging modalities, such as ultrasound or MRI, should be used when possible. The Image Gently campaign published 10 steps you can take to optimize image quality and lower CT dose for pediatric patients. I summarize a few of those steps here. First, we need to increase awareness and understanding of CT radiation dose issues. This is what we hope to accomplish at this symposium. Second, as I just discussed, alternative imaging or no imaging should be used when appropriate. When CT imaging is medically necessary, it is important to child size the dose. The Image Gently website has standardized pediatric CT protocols available. It is also important to optimize the scan parameters and make sure the patient is centered in the gantry. And it is important to minimize the area scanned by scanning only the indicated area and scanning only once. I end with a slide of references from this presentation. Thank you.